tonight. All right, let's do this. We turn up the heat at Kojin as two home chefs get fired up over fire roasted chicken. It's a good looking chicken, so what could I screw up? Brought to you by Stella Artois and Toronto Life. When in doubt, just add double of any ingredient. <laughs> this is Chef Artois. Hi, I'm Pei Chen in the heart of downtown Toronto at the Shangri-La Hotel, home to the Momofuku Noodle Bar. And right above the noodle bar is the third floor concept, Kojin. Named after the Japanese god of hearth and kitchen, open fire cooking is practically a religion at Kojin. Overlooking Toronto's financial district, Kojin's red leather booths and fridge full of dried and aged local beef may scream steakhouse, but that's just the start. Almost everything here is finished on an open grill with an island influence. Chef de Cuisine Eva Chin's love for farm-to-table started in Hawaii, where she grew up cooking in earthen ovens with volcanic rocks alongside her grandmother. I'm half Samoan, half Singaporean, born and raised in Kahuku. Cooking was necessity. My grandmother and my grandfather owned a farm. Since I was a kid, I often have memories of raw food on our counter, and I would watch my grandmother turn it to delicious ono. When I'm cooking food, I imagine the person who's going to eat it, how they're going to feel. If I'm trying to make a dish that relives a memory when I was young, eating on the streets in Hawaii, I want them to eat it and feel like they are walking down the streets in Hawaii. I'm trying to accomplish, obviously, the aloha spirit first and foremost, but most importantly, Kojin offers flavors that challenges so many boundaries and offers stories that really connect you and make you feel that this restaurant is more than just a menu and servers. It's a whole experience. Kojin's open flame almost went out when the global pandemic hit, and all restaurants and bars across Canada were forced to temporarily shut down. Thanks to Eva's innovation during the pandemic, Kojin's customers can still expect local ingredients, bold flavors, and five-star food, whether they dine in or get delivery. That matters to Canadians who are craving exceptional cuisine and comfort now more than ever. And it also matters to Stella Artois, the best-selling Belgian beer in the world. Stella may be served in 95 countries, but they wanted to do something in Canada to support restaurants and bars across the country. So they created Rally for Restaurants. It's a platform for bars and restaurants to sell gift cards online. That way, locals can continue to support their favorite spots, even if their dining room is temporarily closed. Any restaurant across Canada can sign up. Then people can go online to purchase gift cards. The benefit for restaurants is they get to start using the much-needed funds right away. And there's a bonus for patrons because Stella Artois adds an extra $10 to the value of each gift card. It's Stella's way of thanking diners for supporting local establishments. And tonight, there's even more reason to celebrate because Stella Artois has a special surprise in store for everyone at Kojin. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us here at Kojin. Very excited to have you. My name is Pei Chen, and tonight, before dinner is done, one of you is going to win the title of Kojin's Chef Artois. Two of you in the room tonight, any two of you, will be competing to see who is the better home chef. That person will win a $1,000 prize package courtesy of Stella Artois and Rally for Restaurants. Both competitors will have to recreate a signature dish chosen by Kojin's chef de cuisine, Eva Chin. Then the winner will take home the $1,000 prize pack along with the title of Chef Artois. Our two competitors are Dina Kawaji and Raluca Urlia. <laughs> Raluca, do you cook well under pressure because we're all watching you? That's the only way I know how to cook. Really? Who's usually watching you? My kids and judging a lot. Oh, little mini judges. Perfect. Dina, how do you feel about cooking in a competition setting? A little pressure, but I'm excited. How do you feel about fire? Well, they say about playing with fire, right? <laughs> so uh, we'll see how that goes for me today. Good. You both have your hair back, so that's good. <laughs> Dina and Raluca, the entire restaurant is going to watch you tonight as you compete for the title of Chef Artois. But there's really only one person you have to impress, and that's Kojin's chef de cuisine, Eva Chin. <laughs> 
Chef, what recipe have you chosen for the contestants to cook tonight? So I've chosen our fire roasted soy braised half chicken, which is our alliteration of huli huli chicken from Hawaii. I think it's one of the best representations of Hawaii. There's nothing to hide. At the end of the day, it is a perfectly roasted half chicken on the plate. <laughs> I'm sure you're both feeling a little bit nervous, but uh, we are going to help you out. We have a video of Chef Eva creating her dish. It's full of tips and information there to help you out as you battle along your quest to become Kojin's Chef Artois. I'm originally from Kahuku, Oahu, in Hawaii. It's a very small town. Today we're making fire roasted soy braised half chicken. It's actually my iteration of huli huli chicken. Huli in Hawaiian means to flip, to rotate on the grill. My memories of huli chicken is chicken legs rotated on this barrel in the back of food trucks with billowing smokes of kiawe wood just wafting through and it's amazing. The marinade, we've got shoyu, we've got sake, brown sugar, reduced pineapple juice. Something that my grandmother likes to incorporate is instead of normal ketchup, she smokes the ketchup over kiawe wood and she puts it into the marinade, which creates this wonderful layer of depth. That's our huli huli chicken specialty here. But the most important thing is the cooking process. Every culture has their type of braised chicken or roast chicken. In Hawaii, we like to braise it and smoke it over the fire. Really holding up the chicken through skewers instead of laying it on a grill cage and letting the flames really envelope the skin, the bones, and caramelize that marinade, mopping it over. Just a lot of love, a lot of TLC. Don't overcook the chicken. When you overcook chicken, it becomes stringy. Make sure you don't undercook the chicken so you don't see blood when you open it. And most importantly is the finish over the charcoal. It's my signature dish. It's one of the highest selling dishes in Kojin. It's relatable to everyone at Kojin. That's how we want to translate it too. I'm definitely a little bit nervous between butchering the chicken and the charcoal and like, I've just never had this kind of pressure when I'm cooking. I can't believe my name just got called. I am so excited to try to do this dish. I'm feeling pretty confident about winning. Orluka and Dina, you will have 60 minutes to recreate Chef's fire roasted chicken. You'll be judged on technique, presentation, and flavor. We're gonna put 60 minutes on the clock and your time starts now. Let's do this. I've never braised chicken before. More of a grill a chicken breast kind of person. Between butchering the chicken and the charcoal, I have no idea what I'm doing. Never cut a chicken in half before. I'm just trying to butcher it, like not really sure how. <laughs> oh, this side's way better. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we'll see how it goes. Might have put too much oil already. I'm thinking the dish is going to be a little bit more difficult to execute. There were a lot of elements to the dish. To do it, a dish of this caliber is incredible. The fact that the recipe is inspired by her grandmother means there's a lot of love to it. You have to be able to bring just as much love to the dish. So that's probably the hardest ingredient to bring to the table. If I can just get the ingredients on there, try to make them look as pretty as possible, I might actually have a chance. And it's a good looking chicken, so what could I screw up, right? <laughs> Steamed pork belly banana leaf wraps. Mm. Ceviche poke. Oh, yeah. Very tasty. Maui short ribs dressed in a sticky soy glaze. Yes. Look at the color on that chicken. It's slowly cooking it and marinating it at the same time so all the flavor gets infused into the chicken before you put it on the charcoal. All that sugar, the sugar makes it taste great too. And it smells delicious. <laughs> I don't really remember if I saw Chef adding this sauce to the pineapple salad, but I feel like it would be a good tie-in either way. When in doubt, just add double of any ingredient. <laughs> Eight minutes! I think we're ready to move to the fire, which is the exciting part. I believe our contestants will face challenges when they are trying to maneuver the chicken over the grill. Hoping to get like that really nice flavor chef described. And realizing that they have to control the fire, not with a switch, but with a fan. I'm talking about a bamboo hand fan that any grandmother would be using. What angle the wind goes through will challenge how the charcoal burns your chicken. Kind of nice. Like I've literally never done this before, and I'm really happy with myself right now. Three minutes left on the clock. A little bit of salt on top. I think it's pretty, pretty nice. Five, four, three, two, one. Ends up. You're done. I don't feel like I totally messed up, which is a relief. I learned how to butcher a chicken. <laughs> I learned how to cook over an open flame. But we'll see what the judges think. I have no idea. 
Wow. Thank you. So what do you think of this just by looking at it? I can tell that the spine of the chicken may have been left on this. That's why it's not flattened on the plate. Mm -hmm. However, all the garnishes look like they're right. The color of the roast looks quite nice. Yeah, you sound impressed with that. I am. Let's dig in. The in chicken there? could be cooked a little bit more. I think if she cut the chicken properly from the beginning, the heat would have retained a lot more. Yeah, the thigh is quite undercooked, I Let's would say. Let's not eat the thigh. Okay. Chicken breast is cooked perfectly. Okay. It's actually really moist. I would recommend more flavor. I don't know what it's missing. If the bone was taken off correctly in the first place, right. the sauce would have gotten into the flesh a lot uh, more. Ah, okay. I'm definitely very impressed that Dina had the salad right. Mm -hmm. The chicken breast is cooked perfectly. So all in all, she did it like not a bad job. Yeah, honestly, for the first time, I'm really impressed. Yeah, so we'll see how she compares to Ruka's. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very proud of myself. I put out a good looking dish. It looked like it was cooked well, it smells good, and I hope it tastes just as good. Do you like how she butchered her chicken? Yeah, actually, it looks pretty good. When I plated it, I had two parts of salad, so it is missing a, a bunch of salad there. Okay. It smells wonderful. I gotta cut into it. <laughs> I'm gonna cut into it to find okay. out more. I'm excited for it. It's got a nice sweetness to it. It's a little sweeter than I it's wanted. Sweet. The thigh is cooked perfectly. She did a really good job on it. The breast is not. The breast is dry for me. <gasps> this breast is overcooked compared yeah. to Dina's, mm -hmm. but this thigh is cooked perfectly. To me, it has the flavor, though. The charcoal finish is stronger in this chicken. Ah, oh, I love the smokiness that. at the yeah. end, yeah. Okay. Both Dina and Raluca did really well. Under yes. such immense pressure yes. to be able to cook a half chicken that they've never cooked before, and uh, both successfully cooked over the fire. Yeah. But I think it's pretty obvious that we know. I know. Who's the better one here? I know what you know. <laughs> I know what you know, too. I, you know what I know. <laughs> <laughs> Dina and Raluca, you both did a surprisingly great job with your chicken. <laughs> I say that because it was not an easy dish and you both did really, really well. So you should feel very proud of that. But there can only be one winner. So despite all your amazing efforts, there's only one winner. And the winner for tonight's Chef Artois Challenge is... Ryluka. <laughs> The reason why you won, your chicken was cooked throughout. <laughs> Most importantly, there's enough sugar in your glaze that caramelized really well over the charcoal fire. The smell brought me back. That's Huli Huli Chicken. Well, Luca, in addition to winning the title of Kojin's Chef Artois, you get to take home a prize package worth $1,000, courtesy of Toronto Life, Stella Artois, and Rally for Restaurants. And if you would all like to support a restaurant near you, you can log on to the website, rallyforrestaurants.ca. So log on, dine out, stay safe, and thank you for coming.